Today we welcome one of my favourite cars back to the channel. It is a car with extensive damage. On that note, make sure before you buy your next car, you use Car Vertical. You get a Car Vertical report before you buy your next car. All you've got to do is go and type in your registration plate into Car Vertical or the VIN number and it will bring up a whole host of things that you may well not have known about. On the topic further of damaged Porsches, check out this Porsche Boxster. It had two sets of accident damage reported on it. All the pictures are there on Car Vertical, but you've also got mileage discrepancies and things like outstanding finance, recalls, previous plate changes, whether or not it's been exported, whether or not it's been stolen, all sorts of stuff that you really wanna know before you buy a car and you otherwise would not know. Use my code on the screen to get a discount before you buy your next car. With that said, let's get on with the video. Hello, hello, welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Octane Collection. Today, I'm here with my 997.2 GT3 RS, because today, I'm mooting a very interesting topic. Is it now time, even though I've just done a load of work to it, is it now time, financially, sensibly, and the best idea to upgrade my GT3 RS 3.8 to the four litre? And what better way to do that than Get one out, compare the two differences, and then go for a drive. We'll be talking all things 997 as well because I've made no secret of the fact that I think the 997 market is absolutely where you want to be. I think it's peak modern classic 911 and I think it's a great place to be. So we'll get into that as well. I've had a marvelous drive down here to Octane Collection in this car. I absolutely adore it. And many people say the four liter variant of this car is literally just this with a four liter engine, which is not true at all. There are quite a few differences aesthetically, structurally, and also performance wise over and above the standard car. There's of course also a difference in abundance. There are about 2,000 of these made worldwide, which isn't many at all when you consider the new 911 ST has been touted as limited at 1,948 units or whatever it is, a load of them basically. And there's a hell of a lot less of these on the roads than there will be 911 STs. So definitely, definitely a very rare car, particularly in right hand drive anyway we have got a four liter here and we'll start with the aesthetic differences first you'll notice the wings at a glance look the same you see little things like the end plate versus this this has just got an extra little ridge on it there and it's ever so slightly bigger you see that very very subtle difference pitch and angle wise though they look pretty much exactly the same obviously mine's got the clear rear lenses which were an upgrade or i say an upgrade they were an option anyway from the factory i'm not sure whether or not they're an upgrade it looks like the car's got cataracts or it's been through halfords not the biggest fan of those although i do think it looks all right on mine but apart from the livery there is a really really cool difference on the four liter over and above the 3.8 you'll notice the arches on here are all smooth. You see that? It's all kind of blended into the bodywork. Whereas here, on the 3.8, they are plastic. And that is because on the 4 litre, they've got carbon arches. That is actually carbon. So if you whack that, you're in a whole heap of trouble. Well, you just got to get a new one, which is uh, not ideal. Also, on the 4 litre, you'll notice you have these on here as well you have these kind of little ducts on the side they are not on the 3.8 many people do stick them onto the 3.8 and there's obviously just extra aero we've got exactly the same wheels uh, we would have the same brakes if mine had ceramics this has got ceramic brakes and mine's got steel brakes and that's pretty much it other differences are just spec changes to be honest and actually ironically mine has got a four liter interior that was put into it after the crash so actually the interior of this car shares many many parts that mine does too so it's got the same seat inserts we've got the same carbon tunnel in the middle the gear sticks is exactly the same the same red alcantara and the same red grab handles and all of this is actually the same on my car which is a little bit bizarre but in this car we've got the fixed buckets and these are the same seats as you get in a Carrera GT and mine has got folding buckets. Obviously in the back there we've got RS 4.0. Mine says RS 3.8. This car has got Sport Chrono on it, mine doesn't. Uh, and again, I was just discussing this with the chaps, doesn't really matter as in the GT product, Sport Chrono doesn't actually mean a whole host more than just a clock on the dash. But I think these things are going to be extraordinarily good news. They've already proven to be good news because there was a car inside that illustrates that point very, very well. And this 
particular car is now for sale at Octane and I think represent incredible value for money when I explain to you what has happened with a car in here. So we've just had a four litre go in the States for $1.6 million. That price is this extraordinarily rare optioned four litre at around a million quid. I think this particular car is a million quid or maybe just over a million quid. So there's 600 of these made. This is a very, very rare car. And I think thoroughly deserving of being a million pound car. So they've got a white one here as well. There's only got 3000 miles in it. A lot cheaper than this one to buy because they're very, very color elastic, these things. And I know of one uh, UK car that's, I think it's in Mexico blue or it's voodoo blue. It's one of the two or Riviera blue potentially. And that car is bound to be worth one and a half at the very least. This car's got 3000 miles on it. Absolute minter. Still got the blue protective stickers on it. But the one we're talking about over here, it's only done 14,000 miles and it's actually up for 300 and 80,000. Black is my favorite color in Porsches. I know that sounds boring. That strikes me as very good value. Anyway, we're gonna go for a drive then and we're gonna talk about the differences in performance and how this thing was engineered over and above. My lowly 3.8, I say lowly 3.8, these are just absolutely stonking. They're amazing value for money. Great, great buy. Here we go then. Fraser's back on the channel by popular demand. Last video was 599 GTO. Yeah. Yeah. I'm amazed you let me back after that, to be honest. That's right, we didn't die. We didn't. So <laughs> let's try again. <laughs> okay, very similar sounding. It's got like that race car like scuttle, doesn't it? Well, that's the flywheel, so it's, it sounds like a pepper grinder. It's great, it's absolutely great. You kind of lose that a bit in the modern stuff. You've obviously got an old school handbrake as well. Has yours Same got all the red in it? Yep, mine's got all the red. I'm not sure about the handbrake, but this is red, that's red. Basically the story goes, because it was um, crashed, Yeah. I think the airbags came out in some of it, and they basically, whilst they were retrimming the interior, they just thought, let's just make it look like a four litre. So there was actually four litre livery on the outside as well. Terrible. Nice. Yeah. And it had, it actually had four litre RS 4.0 in the headrest, but 3.8 on the rear shelf there. Um, and before I retrimmed it, uh, I just refused to drive it because it annoyed me that much. But I bought it cheap knowing that that stuff was going to get done. So. You should have just changed the rear one to four litres to I've, really annoy everyone. Yeah, I mean, that would have really, really annoyed a lot of people. It's like putting M Sport on your 330. <laughs> I actually prefer that. To be fair. <laughs> Do you drive yours in Sport or just normal? I drive in Sport because I'm annoyed because it opens up the valves a little bit. Yeah. I was just saying, because I've just got the KW suspension done to mine. It'd be quite interesting actually to then drive this with stock suspension. Because it's actually got rid of the little damper button, which I really like. I like the ability to have it soften off. Yeah. Is it a bit knocky or not? It's actually really, really, really good. And if it wasn't for that setting that annoys me a little bit that I don't have it anymore, yeah. I'd say it's just made the car a lot better. It's amazing. Have you driven a Carrera GT or KWs? I haven't, I need to do that, but it's about 25 grand for the set, so I'm yeah. not gonna be in a rush to do that, I don't think. It is worth it if you drive them fast. Maybe not brown Belgravia, but. <laughs> it doesn't even go there, it lives in the Cotswolds. <laughs> Just a quick little poodle to farmhouse and back. Okay, differences then, with this car over and above 3.8, performance wise, We've got an extra 0.2 on the engine, obviously, yeah. to make it a four litre. We've got an RSR crank, which gives you a little bit more low down shove. Yeah, a bit more torque. Um, it's got a few more brake horsepower. I actually don't know off the top of my head what that is. 50? Should we go with 50? I just don't know. <laughs> Perfect. What's the horsepower on your 3.8, do you know? No idea. 450? Yeah, these are 493. Yeah. I actually quite like left-hand drives, to be honest. I actually quite like lefties, to be fair. And you were saying something which was you really could. interesting. There's like a decent, um, there's a decent market for left-hand drive cars. Yeah, way better. I mean, the right-hand drive stuff, 
you know, it is, it's rarer, which is yeah. great. However, it's also a smaller market, so you've got to balance it up. And there's obviously a lot more people and a lot more Porsche collectors with more money in the left-hand drive market. Yeah, yeah. So it just opens it up a bit wider. Yeah, absolutely. And with the age of these things now approaching that kind of magic figure where America can have them, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, a lefty's not a bad idea. That's part of the reason Pro GTs went so nuts because they are lefties and they're approaching that sort of 20, 25 year limit. Yeah, 25 year. But the thing is though, with the Carrera GTs, with the US ones, there wasn't much difference to either, besides the reflectors and you could get two ride heights. Yeah. With these, they couldn't get lightweight glass because of regulation. They couldn't get a cage. Oh, really? So it might even make these even more expensive in the US than the US cars. Yeah, you don't want a US car. I think the Carrera GTs that. The US cars aren't favoured, they, they did, yeah, they did something weird with the suspension, didn't they? Well, you could buy two, because you couldn't get lift, you could buy two different ride heights, so you could oh. buy the, U, the EU ride height, but you get a little bit higher. Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. I must admit, right now, I really don't notice any difference. The brakes are better, but that's because they're ceramics. They've got a lot more kind of shove on them. Yeah. I guess, yeah, it does feel a little bit more lively pickup. What I meant, it does feel a little bit more like it yeah. revs freer. Um, is the flywheel different? I, I want to say that it is. I believe so. It's got it's a bit more chattery, isn't it? Yeah. Funny. And you know, these, these are properly rare now. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the production numbers of the ST and things like that. Yeah. This is this is half that. Porsche have lost their minds a bit. Yeah. They start saying, there's literally going to be 2,000 911 STs. Yeah. And probably all of them will be PTS, whereas with these, I believe it was 39 of them were PTS. Oh. Out of the whole 600. Wow. You know, this, this is a French car, so they did, I think, 35 French cars. None of them were PTS. I think, and I think only five of them were black, so the other 30 were white. Really? Yeah, so, I mean, it, it makes it a bloody rare car. Yeah, it's super, super rare. I mean, look at their 40s, 1,300 of those, and they're yeah. millions of pounds. And they they all look the same. And this, of course, for those that aren't complete Porsche bores, this is, of course, the last GT3 RS that's a manual. It's the last Mesca. It's the end of an era. And it was kind of the swan song for the 997 generation, which, to me, I think is my perfect blend of 911. Yeah, 100%. And I think 997s generally are going to be a fantastic fantastic bet over the next few years they're not going to go absolutely bonkers all of them there are a lot of them but any form of the special cars i think are going to do pretty well even turbos we were literally just in a dealership just now and uh mr wapham sent me an example of a 997.2 turbo manual in the us a white car so not even pts it's just gone up for two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. dollars i mean it's got red interior and ceramics, not even got sensor lock wheels. And it's turbocharged and four-wheel drive. Yeah, Mesca turbo though. True. So I think the 997s start, I mean that is pushing it, but I think the 997s are starting to be sought after. It's also just pretty as well, you know, it's not, obviously most of them aren't narrow body, but they're, compared to a 992, they're yeah. significantly narrower. Yep. And they've, they've just got a bit more shape to them. I find the 992 is a bit bulbous and a bit, yeah, a bit round. It's a huge car. Also, these are light. They're light cars. The ST, where they're banging on about how lightweight it is, it's yeah. still heavier yeah. than even my 3.8. Yeah. But that's because of regulation. Yeah, and safety, yeah. Which... I get it. I know why they've done it, but still, it doesn't make me want one. I'd have one, don't get me wrong. What is it going to be? 230, 240 less, something like that? So I think they're 230 before spec. Christ. But then, as soon as they get onto the market, you know, they'll be near half a million. Oh, easy peasy. I mean, I wouldn't be buying one for half a million. But... No, and I would take a deep breath before, even if I got allocated one, Yeah. I'd take a deep breath before spending that kind of money on one. I think a 911R for me, yeah, that's where I'd go. 911R seems sensible-ish money. They're gonna be about, what, they're about 300 grand in the trade? Yeah, low, low threes. Black, good. black one, silver wheels. Ah, oh. black wheel, flat wheel. Job done. Magnesium roof. Bosch. Wallop. 
Yeah, that's the one to have. The other thing to know about these cars, obviously the more favorable dimensions, obviously lighter weight, but also the steering in this. You can feel everything that's going on in the road, but not in a disconcerting way. This has got hydraulic steering. It's something that people love the 997s for. The 991 generation obviously brought in electric steering as well. So there are so many strings to this car's bow, and there are so many reasons that this car particularly the 4 litre variant will be stratospheric and I do believe it will drag up the 3.8s with it. 3.8s you're looking at 200 odd for a fresh yeah. one with ceramics, low miles, UK car. Um, for a ratty left hand drive 3.8, 130 maybe, thereabouts. Yeah. You'll want probably 80. <laughs> it's hard to put a market value on mine to be honest. It's, I think the just, first, don't, just don't worry about it. I don't, yeah. That, the reason I bought that car and yeah. not one for 80 grand more yeah. was because I know I would. Well, I know what I'm like. I yeah. molly coddle it. I wouldn't drive it. Yeah. And the one that I've got is just, I know it's never going to be a blue chip. Yeah. Um, fully, fully collectible car. Yeah. Just wrap it brown. Wrap it brown. Yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest wrapping fan and fake paint and all that stuff. It's not for me. Really? Yeah, just leave it factory colours and look after it. That's my... Uh, that's my motto. That fake paint stuff is uh, is nonsense. I've tried it. It's hell. Don't do an orange interior as well. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried fake paint myself. It's it's not a thing. It goes down in between, like everywhere. The crevice. Yeah, every everywhere. Everywhere. Like you're, yeah. you're you're vandalizing inside the car. Yeah. Uh, and, and any I'm, form of car that you care about its residual value of being collectible or anything like that, you've you've literally just. They take most panels off as well. Yeah. Um, have you thought about putting STs on your 3.8 service transports? I have actually, and I spoke to them, but I couldn't weasel a big enough discount. Right. <laughs> They're about 12 grand off. Yeah, I mean, it's to just, an average punter. Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, I think it was, yeah, about that. But well, um, they hold their money, you know, if you're not tracking the car, if you're just using it on the road, yeah. you're not gonna, they're not gonna wear down really. Brakes are good in this, aren't they? Yeah, very, very good. Porsche are on their game with ceramics even back then, weren't they? Jesus wept. Yeah, I was going to do surf transports. I did want to do like a, a deal with them, but 10 grand, no thanks. Yeah. So the problem is though, is that they sell out already, so. Yeah, they don't need yeah, me. They don't need promo. Yeah, they don't care. I love that noise. Shatter. Mine does that. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the old Metzger engines though as well. They're just very mechanical. It's so good. Unlike like the new ones that are muted, soft and... And I feel like some of the um, kind of visceral type stuff that goes on, I feel yeah. like a lot of that's constructed. Well, that's why we specialise in this era as well though, is because it's actually, you know, it, it's an immersive experience. Yeah. You get, you get into a lot of the new stuff and it's just an A to B car. Mm. And even if the doors go up and it, it's a flashy colour, it looks great from the outside, but being a driver and actually wanting to go out and get in it, yeah, you just don't want to. Yeah, you guys have always got the stock that's uh, it's good. It's good to drive. Thanks, mate. Yeah, no worries, mate. I noticed this has got the CDR unit in it. Yeah. And that's a very easy swap into the PCM 3.0, which is obviously then you can put CarPlay in as well. Yeah. It's a peak mine. Porsche. Really. Well, this is about so for Porsche as well. Mm. The 997.1 is now considered a classic. Yeah. So whereas the point two, I believe end of this year, it becomes a classic, and that's when they'll release the new PCM system for it as well. And that'll be unbelievable. Yeah. I think that helps the values as well, because obviously I've got the 997.1 yeah. turbo, yeah. and I just put the Porsche unit in that. It's brilliant. It just makes it more usable. Yeah, and it's and it's completely OEM. Yeah. It's one of the only kind of fiddles you can do with a car that actually people want to see. Yeah, 100%. They're so good. They're just such a cool brand doing their best in places to ruin it, but still, still not dead. It's actually 992. See, look, he loves it. Doing my utmost not to, uh, not to crunch it. Still, like, pretty usable. I would say this yeah. feels a lot nicer to drive. We haven't got the, the damper button on, so we've got softer suspension at the moment. But this feels nicer to drive and more usable than my 992 GT3 Touring. Yeah. You do. I do find you've got to get used to the the actual changing of the shift in these cars as well. Yeah, it's like, like they're quite notchy. Yeah, so you've yeah, got yeah. To force them in. You can't just sort of flick them in with your finger. No, 
and that's the big difference between the turbo gearbox and this. This is very much like a very mechanical, notchy yeah. feel, and you've really got to shove it in. Yeah. Well, that's you know these are meant to be. The reason why these are so much more money than three point eight is that literally when you're driving it at that ten tenths is when yeah. you feel the real difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, that's why you obviously you know you've got so much power for, from just an, an NA engine going yeah. to the rear wheels. Yeah. And also. It's just, I, have you driven a 3.8 on track? I've taken mine on track, yeah. You have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure you'll notice straight away, like, being in a 992, it's so fast around the track, and you'll probably be quicker than one of these. Mm. However, to do a perfect lap in one of these where you're healing and turning correctly, getting yeah. the right gear, is so much more rewarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, it's a lot more difficult, which some people want and some people don't. But, I mean, I tried a Donington in mine, and, um, Got it right a couple of times, yeah. mainly didn't. That's all right. I was laughing my head off the whole way around though. Brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Have you driven a 918? I haven't driven a 918, but that is a video I do want to do, so. You got any lying around, let me know. There's a couple. I'd love to drive one of them. Absolutely love to, I hear such amazing things. That Wapham chap adores his. Yeah. He's had it like six years and he's done 20 odd thousand miles on it. He loves it. I think we, we had one just a, a little while ago. Lucas, yeah, my colleague was driving it, and he said it was incredibly fast. However, yeah. as soon as you went to put the brakes on, you, you noticed the weight of it. Really? Yeah, yeah. And then he was having to like double press the brake and everything just to try and get it to stop the bloody thing. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to drive one. I absolutely love to. Yeah. It's something that people always ask me: Would you get a 918? And it's just something that doesn't appeal about it. The fact that I know it's going to be, it's almost like an iPhone 3G. You yeah. know that that tech at some point is going to be outdated, yeah. borderline unserviceable, even for Porsche. Yeah. Probably long after we've gone, but even in the back of my mind, it just annoys me. And out of that Holy Trinity as well. Where I think am I going here? Going straight through. Perfect. Out of the Holy Trinity as well, I think is you know, I think if you want one to keep long term, you just buy the last because it's a Ferrari product. Yeah. I think if you want to want to go out and just blast in, and you know you want a proper driver's car, I think you go for the P1. Yep. And I think if you want to use every day one, you go for a 918. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One that you used to go to the shops yeah. in every now and again. But you just can't be a Ferrari GT. You can't. And that's the king of the hill. Yeah. And even with the recall now. I don't think it's going to really do too much to them. I think once the parts are all installed and then there's going to be another bull run on them. Yeah. And I think, you know, most owners are sort of, they're, they're obviously frustrated because they can't drive their cars. But I don't think they're worried on values because no. at the end of the day, you know, Porsche are going to change a load of parts for free. Yeah. It's also going to be, yeah. I mean, it may be a year before this all happens. That means a year less of mileage going to be added to all the cars on the market. Yeah. You know, there, there's so many variables that, Work Massive in insurance refunds as well, which I suspect the majority of Ferrari GT owners don't exactly. need five grand like I need five grand, but it's something. Yeah. Better than the kick in the head. Right then, we're just coming up for Octane again. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate you letting me drive this. And uh, it's given me food for thought. Cost to change would probably be about 200 grand for me, maybe 220, something like that. It's definitely food for thought. To my name, so I think we know what's going to happen in short term. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. I thought you were going to leave me hanging there. Uh, make sure you're following Octane Collection on social media then. And they've got a really, really, really cool MFI Brown 911 on the Kahuna platform right now as well. Brown. Brown wow. is key. Remember, you had it first. Bye.